Hi, this is Mark Brickler, and I have a question for you today. Can you really sing the song Sweet Hour of Prayer with gusto and actually mean it? <laughs> you know, as a young Christian in the church I grew up in, we, we sang that song, Sweet Hour of Prayer, but for me it was a lie because there was no such thing as a sweet hour of prayer. For starters, I didn't normally ever pray for an hour, and if I did, it was basically boring. It was rote. It was monotonous because there was no interaction with the Lord. It was just me talking to God for an hour, and I found that very, very boring. And uh, so then as I was, grew in the Lord, I came across the charismatic teacher who taught us how we could take an hour and we could pray for an hour by breaking the hour up into different time spots and then praying for different kinds of things for each of those time spots. And so, yeah, now I'm praying for an hour, but it's still one way monologue. It's still boring as can be because it's me talking to God for an hour. And I did not consider that sweet. So finally, 10 years into my Christian life, the Lord taught me how to hear his voice. And, and that changed everything in every area of my life. But that changed my prayer dramatically because now it could be a two-way dialogue. Uh, the four things he taught me to hear his voice was I could quiet myself down and then just fix my eyes on Jesus, just picture him here next to me because he is. I'll put a smile on my face, uh, ask him a question, ask him what he wants to say to me, tune to flow because I had learned that his voice sounded like flowing thoughts that lit up on my mind and his vision was flowing pictures and his emotions were flowing emotions. So I can tune to flowing thoughts, flowing pictures, flowing emotions and begin to write out the flow that's there. Very similar to what John did in the book of Revelation and King David did in the Psalms and the prophets did and as they wrote in, uh, uh, throughout the Bible, hundreds of chapters uh, of people doing those four keys. And um, so now prayer time became a divine interaction where the wonderful counselor began to give me wonderful counsel. And he was a comforter, he gave me tremendous counsel. He's creative, so he gave me lots of creativity. He's a deliverer, so he set me free with inner healing and with deliverance. And now prayer was amazing because it was God ministering directly to me during the hour or the period of time that, that I was praying. So now it's 40 years later, because I learned how to hear God's voice in 1979. So it's 40 years later, and I've worked with a two-way dialogue with God for 40 years, and, and he's taught me different approaches to prayer, different ways to pray, to release his grace into my life to meet the need that I'm facing today. So if my need is I need deliverance, then it'll be a deliverance prayer. If I need healing, it'll be healing prayer. Um, if I need throne room worship, it'll be uh, throne room worship prayer. And uh, actually, I have written a blog on all these different, uh, each one of the different approaches to prayer. There's 60 different approaches so far, and that may, you, that may make you tired. You may say, 60 ways to pray. I could never learn 60 ways to pray. Well, the thing is, you don't have to learn 60, especially not today. All you have to learn and apply and use is the one that you need today to meet the need that you have. You know, I, I grew up as a carpenter and I built homes and, and I learned to use 60 different tools. And I brought a few of them just to show you. The most obvious, of course, you're going to start with a screwdriver and a locking pliers. You're going to need to use locking pliers. I worked in masonry, so we made concrete. We put up block walls. I uh, And then here's a wrench for a plumber's wrench to get in and do plumbing. And then, of course, uh, tin snips if you uh, want to cut and metal, you're going to need tin snips. And, and you know, that doesn't get to any power tools. You got power drills, you got power saws, you got skill saws, saber saws. I insulated houses so we had stilts. I mean, I went up to my workbench and I counted 40 to 50 different tools. And I've given away quite a few of my tools because I haven't built houses for a long time. But, but I have built houses. I'm building spiritual homes now instead of physical homes. And so, so now I, I, we use these spiritual tools, these 60 different ways to pray, and we use the right tool for the right prayer approach. And uh, what we've done to make this easier, I, I have written a, a blog on each one, and the blogs are all free, so in each one details the how-to, like here's the steps to praying this kind of a prayer. And I've broken those all into 12 categories, so you can actually look at the 12 categories. There's about five prayers in each category, scan down through it, see which one the Holy Spirit leaps off the page and said, this is the one for you today, and then pray that prayer. And 
And like I say, do it more than once because first time I have done anything, it was awkward. <laughs> and um, once I, I mean, when I began to use a hammer, I hit my fingers lots of times, but now I don't hit my fingers at all because I'm skilled with that tool. And so we, we never practice or try anything once and say, oh, it's hard, let's not do it. If we know it's biblical, if we know it's good, if we know it has the capacity to make our lives more effective and to release life, then we practice with it until we're skilled with it. So how about if I run down through those 12 categories, give you a little bit of an idea of, of the prayers that are in them, and then we'll give you a link um, at the podcast notes at the end of this podcast so you can go there and click over to any of the 60 prayer approaches you want to use. And some of these prayer approaches have music in the background and a voice over them, and you know, it's like a coach. So we're walking you through the prayer, and you're praying the prayer together with us. So so numerous ones are that way, and then other ones are, are, are not. So category, category one is just hearing God by day and by night. And so, of course, during the day, we teach the four keys to hearing God's voice, so you can do that comfortably. At night, we teach you how to interpret dreams. We got uh, blogs there on how to interpret dreams, so the wonderful counselor can give you counsel at night through your dreams. Category two is just general approaches to prayer, and of course we have the Lord's Prayer in there, and we also have an evening prayer of thanksgiving. It's really good good to lay in bed at night and just thank God for the day, all the wonderful things that have done. It sets your spirit up to receive all night from God and to put you in a healing mode. Category three is biblical meditation. I think of the disciples on the Emmaus Road, that where they said, were not our hearts burning within us as he was opening scripture to us on the road? So we teach you how to read the Bible in, in a process that's called meditation. God in Joshua 1 8 says, meditate my words. That's more than just studying. That's much deeper. It involves prayer. It involves God using all of my senses, me seeing things, feeling things, hearing his voice. That's all part of biblical meditation. And then flame is in our hearts and our hearts are on fire with the revelation that God has poured into us from the scripture passage. So we teach you how to do biblical meditation. Often I'll have seven step approach so you can know very carefully, very into detail what to do to make this work. We have a section called Healing the Heart. We have a, a prayer on inner healing. We have one on deliverance. We have a prayer approach that just talks about the language of the heart because that's different than the language of the mind. So we need to, need to know to use the language of the heart as we pray heart prayers. Also a prayer there on cleansing cellular memory. Because our cells maintain memory of any of the traumas we've been through. And we want to release all those traumas to God so we can be free of trauma, free of fear, free of panic attacks, uh, and get rid of the demons that are connected to it too, so we can be free and have an abundant life. Divine healing is another category. We talk about miracles, healing, inner healing, and even healing for an organ. Because an organ within us can get damaged. We can pray for God to heal that specific organ and let Jesus come and minister directly to that organ rather than to me as a person. Spiritual warfare is another category. We have a blog on roaring at the enemy. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, roars and he stands next to us and we can roar together and destroy and defeat and scare off the enemy or the attack of Satan. We have a blog there on breaking off the curses of Freemasonry and also a blog on how to remove besetting sins, sins that just hang on forever. How can you remove those from your life? Next category is uh, spiritual worship. Um, we talk about throne room worship. So when we're worshiping, we're actually in the throne room, seeing ourselves in the throne room and worshiping together with the angels. So we teach you the steps for doing that. Praying in tongues, a wonderful approach to spiritual worship. And then soaking prayer, just learning how to soak in God's presence. Another category is kingdom emotions. How do I replace the negative emotions that well up within me with kingdom emotions of, of love and joy and compassion and gratitude and thankfulness? How to step from one to the other. And how to replace kingdom beliefs and how to put on Christ like a garment. We put him on so we stand as Christ in this world and not as self in this world. We're crucified with Christ. It's not us who lives. It's Christ who lives. Another category is anointed ministry. How do we step into the anointing as we minister? How do we commission angels? Those are a couple of prayer approaches there. And the final, another step, another category, I still got three to go here, it looks like. Um, Spirit-led intercession. 
binding uh, demons and loosing the Holy Spirit and the power of praying and speaking a blessing over a person, over any person, so that we can release God's grace into their lives. Another category is interpersonal relationships. We talk there about praying a hedge of thorns around a person so they lose their path towards evil. And another prayer approach on how to enrich your marriage, or how to enrich any relationship, make it better. And the final category then is business and entrepreneurship. One of the prayers there is create a prayer, how to release creativity to solve a problem and to go to the next level. Another prayer is the leader's paradigm, how to make wise decisions by blending together six different ways God speaks to you. And another approach, another prayer approach is, 20, is 21 steps to financial freedom and just praying that through, releasing that into your life. And as I've prayed these prayers over the years, I've, I've seen the sick healed, I've seen arthritis removed instantaneously, I've seen demons cast out, many, many demons, uh, dreams interpreted, hundreds of dreams interpreted, businesses enhanced, including my own businesses, through the creative ideas that God gives through prayer. And um, in it all, just God gives tremendous counsel as to how to maintain effective relationships with everybody that, that I relate to how to not close down with anger, fear, or negativity. You know, there's more than one way to pray. <laughs> However, if all you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. So check on the link below on the podcast and um, take a look at these 60 blogs and let God teach you to become skilled in building a spiritual home that you can live in that's magnificent in every way. This is Mark Berkler, signing off.